Quite rightly so. Thank you to the YP band for their rendition of Away in a Manger. Good morning! Good morning! Several announcements to bring you straight, of, straight away. Number one, Major, it's cold in here. <laughs> it's cold in my house, it's cold in your house, and it's cold in the Lord's house. Put a vest on. <laughs> Number two, Major, it's snowing. Put your wellies on. I'm not responsible for either of those things. We are here in the house of the Lord to worship, to come together, to sing praises to God. And it's Gaudete Sunday, which means there's a bit of a pause in the preparations for, for, for Christmas. It's a pause in the Advent wait and the Advent anticipation where we all go, well, hey, it's coming soon. So we can have a bit of joy in the Salvation Army. We still have half a dozen women called Joy in our core. But you don't need to be called Joy to express joy. Joy, stand up. <laughs> do that, Joy. Do that. Right? That's Joy doing Joy. You're all deputised to be joyful. We've come together. Sorry, what? Another Joy up there. Oh, where's the other Joy up there? Joy Hooper. Joy Hooper. Morning, Joy. Any more Joys? Joy Lawrence? Joy Lawrence? Joy Taylor here? So our Joy is slightly diminished. <laughs> It's pantomime already. Do you know, I'm thinking, what's wrong this morning? Is it because of the weather? Is it because of people are bereft and bereaved because of what happened last night? Or is it people are saving themselves to come out to the carol service this evening? That's uh, not result of the Welsh and the, the Scots, not so bothered. Um, 
But joy is the hallmark of today. Joy is the hallmark because we know already how and why Jesus came. We know already what he did for us. And we can look at the nativity story with Easter in the background. We can look at the Bethlehem nativity with resurrection in mind. And that inhabits our joy and enables our joy as we come together in worship. We're going to stand and sing our first song together, during which time the, oh sorry, the ministry of the singing company, I'm sorry, will come before us singing together. I beg your pardon. The singing company first. Thank you. Do you know, it's just been one of those mornings. The singing company want to come and do their stuff. <laughs> I take solace in the great fact that only the Pope is infallible. <laughs> and as a married man, I can never be infallible. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see the big circle. Started with a bit of joy, a bit of humour, a bit of fun. How many people have been on a camel? Yeah. Was it comfy? No. Uh, there you go. It's not very comfy on a camel. Thank you to the Sing Company for that wonderful rendition. We're now going to stand and sing Joy to the World. Now, did you notice that they went up and down on the camel? Not necessarily all together, but that doesn't matter. When we come to Joy to the World, at any point where we sing Joy, if you fancied going Joy like Joy did before, that would keep your hands warm and keep you occupied. Let's stand and sing Joy to the World.
Please take your seats. A number of Gaudete Sundays uh, ago in various years, we uh, dressed in pink. Maybe next year we reinstate the dressing in pink and then we sing joy to the world and we remember that we have to celebrate and express our joy. The songsters are now going to express their joy as they sing this morning, Celtic Silent Night. Thank you. 
remember the rendition of Silent Night that Simon and Garfunkel did in the 60s, where they sang Silent Night, and underneath it, there was the six o'clock news, and juxtaposition of singing of Silent Night and the news stories of that day. And the two came together. We come together now and pray for the needs of the world. And those words ringing about the presence of God with us, about the miracle of God walking with us, are there as we come to pray. If you've got your newsletter in front of you, you'll see the prayer matters uh, compiled by Lieutenant Colonel David Phillips. We're very grateful to David for, for that. Um, and I want you to have a look at Wednesday, not Wednesday, uh, at Thursday. Thursday the 15th of December. And it's a reading from Father Henri Nouwen, Dutch uh, Catholic priest. The Lord is coming, always coming. When you have ears to hear and eyes to see, you will recognize him at any moment in your life. Life is Advent. Life is recognizing the coming of the Lord. Let's pray and recognize that the Lord is coming to us to speak into our lives. The Lord is coming to us in the answering of prayer. Let's take a few moments of quiet before we continue and give thanks to God for his grace and intercede for the needs of the world. The Lord God Almighty is in our midst. His spirit is moving in this place, amongst his people and in his people. We have gathered in the name of the crucified, risen Jesus. And we begin our prayers by confessing our sins, that this week we've made mistakes. This week we've got it wrong. This week we've spoken when we should have been silent. This week we've been silent when we should have spoken. And we come this morning individually and collectively and we confess our sins. And we seek your forgiveness, Lord, this morning. And in seeking your forgiveness, we trust in the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for our sins. We trust in the sacrifice that Christ made of himself for our sins. And so we can be assured through the words of Christ that we are a forgiven people. We can be assured that not only are we forgiven, we are cleansed and renewed. We come this morning as a people who confess our sins as a people who know the blessing of cleanliness and holiness through Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And in this privileged position we pray, believing, Lord, that we have access to you through Jesus. And we would indeed pray for the needs of the world, for the dear folk that are mentioned on our newsletter, for the folk who need our prayer, for Peter Hoyle, for Ali Newland, for her husband Richard, for John Payne, for Sue Randall, for Diane Meredith and Joanne Alcock. We pray that your healing hand would be upon them today and in the days ahead. We pray for what's gone on in Jersey recently, that terrible, terrible accident and disaster and we pray for the islanders for recovery of bodies for the solace and comfort of families we would pray for Richard and Alice Nunn at the Salvation Army in Jersey that you would enable their ministry as they lead the core to, to care, to provide whatever it is that the states of Jersey need in terms of relief and help. We would pray for folk who are near and dear to us who are suffering in some way, seen and unseen. Those for whom Christmas is a challenging time. Those for whom Christmas is a struggle. 
And in our prayers, we ask that you would inspire us to be an answer. Inspire us to reach out the hand of friendship and fellowship, of care and comfort. We pray for the greater needs of the world against the wars and suffering that are happening. We pray that you would inspire peace in the hearts of men and women, that you would bring your shalom peace to bear, O oh God. We are a waiting world, waiting for hope, waiting for peace, waiting for love, waiting for joy. And we believe that in the person of Jesus Christ, all that has come to pass and all that is available to the world. We pray that you would help us to enter into that, that we would be bringers of peace, that we would be inspirers of joy, that we would be bringers of hope in and through the person of Jesus Christ. Help us wait, help us anticipate this Advent time that the good news of the Nativity might come afresh to our hearts and minds and be of not only comfort, but inspiration and excitement to us as we live and work to your praise and glory. Lord, in the name of the risen Jesus, hear our prayer. Amen. The YP band have already uh, played first thing uh, in our meeting. We look forward now to uh, their ministry. We're thankful for Kev for, for leaping into the, uh, the gap. Something he likes to do anyway. I think uh, the YP band have a very uh, strong place in Kev's heart, so we thank you for that ministry too. <laughs> so much. Um, the, the YP band were, uh, helped the Cub Carol service on Thursday night and they did such an excellent job. Um, so thanks very much for all that you did. Uh, you've done today, but also that you've done um, throughout Christmas. Uh, you are a real blessing uh, to us. Just before um, I read scripture, just to, to point out, just to re a, a reminder really, because um, it's a kind of a new thing, next Saturday night there's a Christmas quiz 
Something a bit different. Amongst the carol service and all the other things, there's a Christmas quiz here at seven o'clock. Um, bring your own refreshments and bring a pound and bring your friends and anybody else who might like to come. It's just something a bit different in the middle of Christmas to just try and share some fellowship together and we'd love to see you. Our scripture reading today is taken from Luke chapter two and I'm gonna read verses eight to 20. Familiar words, but we pray that God will show us something new in this these days. Luke chapter 2, reading from verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just had, as they had been told. Amen. And we're going to sing a carol associated with that part of the nativity story, while shepherds watch their flocks by night. We'd like to stand and we'll sing this song through together, which will be followed by the ministry of the band, and then we'll take up the offering. Thank you. Oh, yeah. the words 
speak. <laughs> there are things we sing in carols that we rarely say at any other time. But that last verse, could I say that last verse again, uh, Nigel? Is that okay? Glory, oh glory be to God on high and to the earth be peace. Goodwill henceforth from heaven to men begin and never cease. From heaven to humanity. From heaven to humanity. Goodwill. But have you noticed there's something missing there? From there to there. From here to there. The goodwill has to be spread out. It is given from heaven to humanity. Humanity have to share it. It is no mistake and no accident that the symbol of our faith is a cross. From heaven to earth came the blessing. And through Christ, we are enabled to share the blessing of heaven. Gout it. Sunday and we were getting on down weren't we? Yeah. If Gaudete is all about joy, the band increased our joy this morning as we celebrate together. Wouldn't it be great if the songsters could learn the Latin for next year and just <laughs> sing it in between the bits, yeah? <laughs> Songster lead is not convinced she's writing a resignation on the back of an envelope right now. But oh. Marvellous. Thank you so much to the band for that. We're going to wait upon you just now for the offering uh, as we uh, give to the work of the Lord. <laughs>
Shall we pray? As we lay before you our financial offerings, we give you all that we are and everything you have entrusted to us. Come bless these gifts for the sake of your kingdom and glory. Amen. Thank you. Some, sometimes things just hit you sideways, don't they? I wasn't ready for Howard to play Star in the East this morning. That was beautiful, thank you. Because my mum used to sing that, and I lost my mum a long time ago. So I'm just embracing that moment and saying thank you, Lord, for that beautiful memory. And now we're going to sing together. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're going to sing Angels from the Realms of Glory, um, a, a great song which in, in, invites us to come and worship. I would invite you to stand as we sing these verses through together before David brings our message from today. <laughs> celebration and fun and joy let me say that you should have seen my bottom in the 1980s <laughs> I'm not referring to my posterior I am referring to my playing bottom in a midsummer night's dream in 1982 it was a triumph it was marvellous I remember the paper, the school paper writing, we have never seen an ass like that before. <laughs> I 
was marvellous, I have to confess. And um, playing Bottom the Weaver with his friends Quince the Carpenter, Snug the Joiner, Flute the Bellows Mender, and Snout the Tinker, and Staveling the Tailor. All amateur actors who, within A Midsummer Night's Dream, put on a play. They put on a play in Act 3, Scene 2. They are referred to as the Rude Mechanicals, meaning that they're skilled labourers, they're working people. And the Nativity has its own version of the Rude Mechanicals in the form of the Shepherds. They feature very strongly in the story. We use the word rude to describe somebody who is discourteous or coarse or vulgar. But historically, it can also mean people who are simple and straightforward. Something that is straightforward in its construction. It might be a rude construction. You might be in rude health. It means that you're robust and strong and straightforward. The shepherds were strong and straightforward, robust and sturdy, as was the stable, as was the scene that they witnessed. Do you know, if you read Luke's account of the nativity, 60 odd percent of the story is taken up with the shepherds and their experience. So they are not bit players like Bottom and, and like uh, Snug and Flute and Snout and Quince. They are major players in the scene. In fact, you can't have Christmas without pudding and turkey. You can't have nativity without shepherds as witnesses to the tale. Shepherds were abiding in their fields. It says in Luke 2.8, in that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. We've heard the story so many times and it gets rolled out at Advent time and rolled out on Christmas Day on, on December the 25th. Which is odd because actually chances are Jesus was never ever born on December the 25th. It just so happens that we've loaded the event onto the date. The pagans had the festival and good enterprising people that Christians were, they slotted Christmas on top of it. Let's not get rid of a perfectly good season of celebration. Let's reinvent it. Why should the pagan gods have all the best festivals? like William Booth said, why should the devil have all the best tunes? We'll just purloin the festival and use it. Chances are that Jesus was born in May or April. They wouldn't have been out in the fields in, in, in winter at that time of year and in, at those places because it would be disastrous for looking after sheep. But back to the story. They were keeping watch over their flocks by night. If you translate it, it's more uh, they were keeping the watches of the night. For those who have been in the, the Navy or the Merchant Navy, there are watches on board a ship. Well, the shepherds had watches that they kept and they took it in turn to look after the ship. Can you imagine, you're the bloke on the watch before the angels arrived and you didn't get the gig and then the, the bloke after you goes, you'll never believe anything. Where was I when that happened? Where was Johnny when Whitney fell over and ended up in the arms of Harry Redknapp? <laughs> if you don't know the story, get Whitney to tell you the story. Where was I when that happened? The hairy bikers came to Aberdeen, to Aberdeen Citadel when we were the officers there, and I, I was unwell, I got a bit of chippy tummy, and I missed out on the hairy bikers. It's always that sense of, where was I? I missed out on that. Can you imagine that shepherd? Because now the bloke who the angels talk to, he's going to be giving it that forever and a day. But here are these rude mechanicals. They've been given the news. They've been given the news that Christ has come. What a huge piece of news. How significant is it that these rude mechanicals are given the news? 
Well, the ball had already been started rolling. Mary started the ball rolling in the Magnificat when she said that actually the tables are going to be turned over, empires are going to be brought down, and, and, and the powerful are going to be brought down, and the humble are going to be lifted up. The hungry are going to be lifted up, and the full are going to be sent away. When, when Zechariah tells his song, when his tongue is released after he's gone into silence, he tells a story of revolution as well, that actually the oppressed and those in need are going to be given a good news. And his, his lad is going to be the messenger to that who's going to point to Jesus. The story tells us that the Messiah is going to be something different than they expected. And lo, the news is given to the rude mechanicals, to people who weren't allowed to give testimony in court, people who were, were shunned by regular society. Why? Because they weren't pure and they weren't clean and they weren't tidy and they weren't perfect and they were really quite rough around the edges. Isn't it brilliant that the news of the nativity is given to people rough around the edges? Look at the people next year. We're all rough round the edges. We turn out very nice in our, our outfits and our uniforms, and but we're all rough round the edges. We're all rude mechanicals in one sense or another. We've all messed up, we've all got issues, we've all got problems, we've all got difficulties, we've all got history. But that's who the news was given to. People like you and me. People like you and me who have similar problems to folk who had problems then. Difficulties in life. It was given to very normal, ordinary people. Now we are all normal. Well, I'm standing here looking, hey. And you're looking back at me, so none of us are normal, are we? But that news is given to normal, ordinary people. I am bringing you good news of great joy to all people. For to you is born in this day, the city of David, a saviour who is the Messiah, the Lord. The church is not the preserve of nice, pleasant, middle-class people. It's the preserve of sinners saved by Christ who know the grace of God we're all here imperfect Christ on one occasion spoke about his mission and why he came I have come not to call the righteous but sinners to repentance every one of us is a rude mechanical and every one of us can come and know the forgiveness of God through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, who started as the babe of Bethlehem. Every one of us can come to him and know love this season and forgiveness this season. Every one of us. And maybe as we glory in the baby, we need to remember that he grew. As we remember the cloths that he was laid in in the manger, we remember the cloths that he left behind at the tomb. And maybe this Christmas time, maybe the shadow of the cross and the light of the resurrection needs to shine for us. Because in doing so, it will mean that Christmas takes on an even more significant turn and meaning for us. Let's celebrate with joy. Let's have a Gaudete time of it. Let's celebrate and just have a, a wonderful time. But let's remember that the coming of Christ is linked to the dying of Christ and the raising of Christ. And it was brought to the rude mechanicals first. On the front of your newsletter, there is a picture attributed to Rembrandt. Suggesting is it was somebody who painted in the style of Rembrandt. But it's remarkable that what you see there is quite shadowed. Who's at the centre and what's at the centre and what is he doing? 
It's the Christ child shedding light. It's the Christ child shedding glow and light to the rude mechanicals. And there they are in a very ordinary seal scene. Rembrandt painted a barn that was very, very ordinary. He painted it with all the gubbins and all the guff and all the stuff that people put in a barn. I don't know if you've got a garage. Have you got a garage that you throw everything into and then lock, lock the door very quickly? <laughs> Jesus came to a stable that was full of stuff if Rembrandt is anything to go by. Jesus comes to a world full of stuff. All the stuff that we've accumulated, all the stuff that hangs around us, all the stuff that's there in the dark. And he shines his light. He comes to ordinary people in ordinary settings. And we witness something extraordinary. God with us. Sturdy folk, robust folk, folk who are experiencing difficulty and challenge. And the good news is, God is with us. On his deathbed, John Wesley was singing a song. And his last words, best of all, God is with us. Let's not lose that in everything this Christmas time. Let's go to Bethlehem and look in the manger, see the face of God. And let's recognize that he came for me. He came for us. And he came first of all to rough folk and tough folk, to folk who were on the margins and folk who weren't that respectable. Folk who weren't pure and holy and marvellous. Folk who were flawed like you and me. Isn't that a miracle? Isn't that something to marvel on? Let's receive that news. Let's receive that Christ child. And let's respond. And that, my friends, is the bottom line. Amen. Let's rest in that for a second and let's pray together. Lord, we thank you because you came to ordinary people just like us. Lord, there are times when we wonder whether we're good enough. We wonder whether there are things that we've done that um, exclude us from your kingdom. And yet we are told over and over again in scripture that you came for the whosoever, for everybody. And so, Lord, I pray that this uh, Advent and Christmas time, we would know your acceptance, your welcome, your love and your grace. Lord, we pray that we would accept um, your forgiveness and that we would come to you afresh. Lord, thank you for the reminder of that this morning. And Lord, and may we, as we go out, remind others about the, the in, inclusive nature of your gospel, that you came for everybody. Lord, send us out with that love in your hearts, in our hearts, that we may show you to all who we come into contact with. In your precious name we pray. Amen. We conclude our meeting for this morning by singing the, the first Noel. Let's sing together in praise and wonder. Let's go out into the world with a real sense of awe and amazement that Christ came for me, that the babe of Bethlehem is God with me. Let's stand and sing. <laughs>
Nativity time, Advent time, like Easter people. <laughs> Hallelujah. We know that truth for ourselves. And how do we respond? Well, Christina Rossetti has told us how we need to respond in the final verse of that poem that became a carol. What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? Give my him heart. my heart. Let's go out as heart-giving people that others may see Christ and know Christ through our testimony, through our lives and witness. Rude mechanicals, go out there and share the good news with people. Amen. Amen.